Okay, so uh, fairway bunkers is what we're talking about. Uh, what do you think is our main objective in a fairway bunker? To get it out. Get out. With distance. Well, I mean to get distance. it with farther distance. out. Lots of distance. Out with distance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who has trouble just getting out fairway bunkers? Okay. Um, sometimes in fairway bunkers are more challenging than others. Sometimes we have a high lip. I would say this is a pretty small bunker with a pretty high lip. That's why we're going to be practicing over here. Others have a much longer space for you to hit out of. You might be in this back section and then hitting out the full length of the bunker and then it's a little easier. Sometimes you happen to hit your ball and it kind of rolls up around the edge and now you're stuck. You know, you've got this big high lip to get over. Um, fairway bunkers is all about ego okay if you try to advance that ball too far you're probably going to run into hitting the lip of the bunker right you have to understand that you've got yourself in here so you have to take your medicine and what happens is if you get a little too greedy and you try to take too much distance and try to hit it too far then usually what you're doing is choosing a longer club something that doesn't have much loft and then you accidentally run into the lip. And I'm not saying that everybody has an ego issues. It's just that what we end up doing in the bunker is we just kind of bite off more than we can chew, right? We got ourselves into this mess. We have to get ourselves out and take the medicine. They're designed to trap us, designed to add strokes to our score. We got to avoid them off the tee. But if we get in here, I'm going to give you a couple of ways that you can figure out how to get out. Number one is Think of how many strokes it's going to take you to get from here to there, even if you were on the fairway. Right, so let's say, for instance, we got to go all the way down to that red flag. Okay, that red flag from here is about 170 yards. So how many strokes is it going to take you, even on the grass, to go 170 yards? It should take two. Okay. 170 yards, let's say for instance you hit your ball um, 150 yards from the grass from here. That would be a real nice shot, right? Well, you still have a 20 yard shot to get on the green. Let's say you could hit your ball 100 yards from here. That would leave you with 70 yards to your target. So there's your two shots. Well, let's say from the fairway bunker, let's say you 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 took the option of only advancing your ball out 30 yards because you weren't getting greedy, you weren't trying to hit a 100 yard fairway bunker shot, right? If you only advanced at 30 yards, well then what do you have left? A 140 yard shot. You might have a chance at still getting to your target in two because you can hit a 140 yard shot from a nice lie in the middle of the fairway. What we tend to do is we tend to try to make this shot advance the furthest. But we're really not doing the math in our head to figure out that we don't need this to go very far. We can flip-flop our roll. Instead of hitting a fairway wood from here and a pitch onto the green, we can hit a pitch from here and a fairway wood onto the green. See where I'm going with this? So when you're trying to get out of the fairway bunker, then step one is to get out. Step two is maybe get some distance, depending on whether you can get out or not. I've got three clubs that you may or may not choose to hit. I've got a pitching wedge, right? Most people, I think, could get out of a fairway bunker with a pitching wedge. I've got a seven iron, and I've got a rescue club. Now, who, who, who hits a rescue club a lot when they get in the fairway bunker? Anybody? Okay, this has only, this particular one has only 22 degrees. So actually, I use a seven wood. A seven wood. So seven wood actually has <clears throat> probably about the same amount of loft. A 7 iron has 35 degrees, and the pitching wedge has 48 degrees, right? So if you think about this bunker, if I have a 45 degree angle, I should be able to get out with a pitching wedge. And the way this works in, in the measurement is from here going backwards would be that 48 degrees. Now here's one way to look at you. Obviously you can't ground your club in the bunker, but you can get down here real close, hold the club down here level to the sand, and now you can see that if you connect with the ball going that way, the pitching wedge will advance it out, no problem. See how that works? Mm -hmm. So you kind of lay it down. If I was going this way, 
I might have a little bit harder trouble getting over that lip of the pitching wedge. Right? If I take the seven iron and I do the same thing, I lay it flat right here. See, I can barely clear that lip. And if I'm going this way, I can't clear it at all. I'm gonna run right into it. And if I take this four rescue and hold it like this, see the angle that it's going on? I can't get over that lip if I hit a normal shot from here. Definitely shouldn't think about going this direction. So the problem that we have is we, we take a club that doesn't have enough loft. And then when we don't take a club that has enough loft, we then have to manipulate the club, which causes all kinds of problems. We end up hitting the sand before we hit the ball and we duff it and it doesn't go the distance that we want anyway because we're having to change the angle of our body. If we just make a normal golf swing with the right lofted club, we get the power that's appropriate for that club, and we get out, and essentially we've made a logical decision, we take our medicine and we move on. What happens is when we take a club that doesn't have enough loft, we then have to do all the bad things. We have to manipulate our bodies, we scoop it, we duff it, we don't hit it as far as we should, we might actually leave it in the bunker, and then consequently we might hit it crooked and now we're in the rough over there, no further away than, you know, for, no closer to the hole than the pitching wedge would have got us. And now we have a much more challenging shot from over there. Had we just taken the pitching wedge and plopped it out down the fairway, we feel better about ourselves, we made a confident swing, we made a smart decision. We walk up, now we're feeling good about ourselves. We take out our fairway wood and knock it right on the green. All right, see how the logic goes? The confidence, it's like a, a confidence roller coaster at the same time. Okay, we're playing this physical game, but it's a, very much a mental game as well. So when we get in the bunker, if we start causing ourselves to make mistakes by making mental errors, choosing the wrong club, duffing the shot, now we come out over here and now we're in a low place confidence wise and we're asking ourselves to hit a five wood onto the green so you can see how we kind of get ourselves into a rut and then we stay there because we're not making the right choices so as far as that's concerned it's that's that's most of the problem the technique of getting out is a different story right 